through the, you know, floggings and all of that, have you ever had to undergo any, you know, medical treatment or no. anything for things going too far? No. And it has actually gotten to the point where I no longer bruise, which really sucks. Because if you bruise, you have a couple of days of feeling the flogging or the cropping or whatever you've had done to you. You have a couple of days if you feel it afterwards, which is really cool. I know that makes no sense, does it? Okay, when you get flogged, you have all the, the, the sensations, okay? And especially when you're flogged on your bottom or if you get hit with a cane or a crop or whatever on your bottom, okay? The next day, when you sit, if you have bruises, you feel it again. And you remember the flogging or whatever was done to you as you sit or when you stand or when you walk, you feel it, okay? Because you have the bruises, you have the sore muscles, and you can think back, okay? It's like a little reminder of, of the pleasure that you had. Well, I no longer bruise which really sucks. So I don't have that little reminder anymore. A lot of women do. They continue to bruise. And it's, it's really cool to have that reminder because you can grin all day the next day every time you move and nobody knows why you're grinning, you know. The, the bruising thing, is that just because you've hit a certain level and then you've I guess. Sort of past that level or something? I guess. Or? I don't know. My children touch me like this and I bruise. I get flogged or cropped or things like that, and I don't bruise. It's really strange. Which makes you know, which makes this a lot makes this interesting because you know, for most people, it's like sex is I don't know, I don't know, so fast, or there's only that moment, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's like over. Mm -hmm. and there's nothing to remind you, but with this situation, obviously, there's something else. Oh yeah, submissives will compare bruises. They will compare marks. Oh, yeah. They will compare, yeah. Oh, look, I got this. I got this and I got this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This one I paid for for a week. This was really cool. Oh, yeah. One of the, um, one of the things that's often discussed, and I just want to check and see if it's a myth or not, is the, quote, safe word. No, it's not a myth. It is. The, each person has their own. A lot of people will use red, green, blue. I mean, red, green, yellow, whatever. Um, some people will use other things, okay? A lot of people, some people don't use them. It's a very wonderful thing to have when you're new, when you're first with someone, okay? But the thing a lot of people have got to remember is when you have a safe word, you've got to be able to use it. You can't have a safe word when you're gagged. If you're gagged, a lot of people will put something in somebody's hand and say, drop it when you can't take it anymore. What if somebody enters subspace, okay? You don't think about what's in your hand. You're gonna drop it, okay? Um, the thing about a safe word is, it's got to be something somebody's gonna think of, okay? Somebody's gonna recognize. My safe word is his given name. I don't say his given name unless we're in public, unless we're around his family. The only time I say his given name when it's just the two of us is if something's going on, if I need for him to stop, okay? Um, but it's, I think I've used it three times in the whole time I've known him. The entire time I've known him. A safe word is a very wonderful, wonderful thing to have if you're comfortable with it, okay? Um, some doms will say from the very beginning, I don't believe in them. If a dom tells you from the very beginning, I don't believe in a safe word, run, run fast, because he's not thinking of your safety. Because he doesn't know you well enough to say you don't need a safe word. He needs to get to know you before he says you don't need a safe word. And you need to know him well enough to trust him with your life. Because basically he has your life in his hands as soon as he takes a weapon or hand or anything to you. You were saying you got this list when you first started seeing her. Uh, checklist. In the training aspect, I mean, how kind of how long did it take to get used to people's rhythms, so to speak? It, 
it varies for every person. He is very um, anal. <laughs> Let me just play that one. <laughs> oh, that one did come out wrong. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, um, but you are. He is. Oh, my God. Um, he's very meticulous. Very, oh, oh, gosh. Very, very meticulous in everything that he does. Um, first started talking online, okay? I'm typing to him. Okay is not a word that's allowed. Not allowed. Typing at all when I first started talking to him. Okay. Cannot type that word. Cannot say that word. Not allowed. It's rude. It's lazy. And it's not proper English. Not allowed. Okay, and here I am saying it like crazy, because I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm that Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and time. Just for me, remember. Yes, sir. Um, and typing any anything that refers to the submissive is in lowercase. When you first start talking to him. He is sir. Once you accept him as your master, he is master. Anything that refers to the dominant is in capital. The first letter is capital. So that's just the beginning. You know, it's like there are rules, rules that you live by. And since I knew from the beginning if I accepted him, it would be a 24-7 relationship. I knew this. I have 87 rules. something like that that I live by I have a list of private rules I have a list of public rules I have a list of sexual rules I have a list of party rules and speech rules, and speech rules yes the ones that I gave you about the word okay and the capitalization and all that are speech rules okay public rules I walk to his right two steps behind him um, Sexual rules. Can I? May I? I don't care. Sexual rules. I am not allowed to come without permission. And private rules. When I walk in the door or he walks in the door, I am to welcome him home. It did say that I am to do it on my knees. But that is not a feasible thing in our life. We have children and things have been amended. We have rules that I live by. We have rules that he lives by. You know, it's just how life is because we are 24-7. You know, that's how it is. And I knew this coming into it. I accepted it. And you're giggling at me. <laughs> um, those things are things that my friends find so strange. Like, I know you've heard me ask to leave the room a few times. I asked to go leave the room when we're in the same room. I asked to use the bathroom. Um, before I started having some medical problems, I used to sleep chained to the bed. Um, it was a quick disconnect in case things happened at night. I sleep with my collar on and nothing else. There are just certain things that are a part of our life. I have his coffee ready in the morning. Um, it is brewed when he gets up. Uh, it used to be when he was going to be up when I left in the morning, it was poured for him. His cigarettes were waiting at the computer and his ashtray was emptied. But he's not up when I leave, so I'd no longer do that. His cup is just underneath the coffee maker, ready for him to pour. I live to please him. Some days, when my mood is not as submissive as it should be, it's harder. It is harder. Um, you can't get past that we're all human. But deep down, that is who I am. So that's what I do. 
kind of one thing that strikes me as interesting about you know the the whole thing is this you know the kind of contract concept you know federal is being outside and dealing with my own relationship is that the way things kind of fluctuate in that you think things are a certain way you think there are certain okay this is mine this is yours but that how it shifts is that, have, do you find that when you compare your previous to now previous relationships to now yeah. oh yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah uh-huh um like i said i thought that i was with strong men um and oh god i can't say some of these things i'm trying to be polite i thought i was with strong men and except for one they weren't and then they would end up wanting me to have control of everything and i'm okay when i met him I told him, I said, I think I'm submissive in bed, but nowhere else. And that's all I can handle. Well, I found out differently. You know. Um, it's just, excuse me. I hated rules changing. I hated being one way one day and a different way the next. And having things not not having people be who they say they are. I am who I say I am. And I'm pretty blunt. And nine times out of ten, you can take me for who I am, okay? You ask me a question and I will answer it as honest as I can. If you're not gonna like the answer, I will tell you. Don't ask me that if you don't wanna know the answer. And my children will tell you that I will tell you that. And in my last relationships, they couldn't do that. They couldn't handle that. One of those things that, you know, we drive up and see on the back porch. <laughs> showed me this, the, the paddle mm -hmm. as well. Tell me about the wedding, you know, most <laughs> you know, just, yeah, we talked to him about it already. I want, I want your take on that and on the stocks and, and what all that meant for you. Oh, gosh. Um, my children and him made the stocks. They stained them and they were wonderful. They were wonderful. He cooked the entire meal for the wedding. He set everything up. I hung the flowers for the wedding. Um, he planned most everything. He told me the wedding day was for me. The marriage was for him. That getting married was for me. That being his slave was for him. So, that was done special for me. Does that make sense? Um, I loved having the stocks up there and the night up there. Our wedding cake was flat. Okay. He likes white cake. I like chocolate cake. So in the cake, under my name was chocolate cake. Under his name was white cake. So it was to have brought together as a whole. Um, that everybody that came to the wedding, I had some people from work, came and, and family was there and, and they, all, they all got a kick out of the stocks and everything, thought it was hilarious, the medieval. You know, the, the things I handed out at work said, come see me be knighted, you know. You know so, um, they all came and they enjoyed it. And then they just hooted and I got a picture of him with all the girls from work. And it looks like he's looking down one of them's shirt. It's hilarious. And um, the girl that he's 
supposedly looking down her shirt. Um, she's got that picture. It's just hilarious. And then you've got pictures, a few snapped pictures of me while I'm in the stocks. But oh my God, you should have seen all the people going crazy when we put him in the stocks. Everybody that had a camera jumped up and just went berserk when I put him in the stocks. Oh, I gotta have a picture of this, I gotta have a picture of this. Everybody knew that there was no way we were ever seeing him in the stocks again. And that just meant a lot to me that he actually did that because that's not his nature. He joked around with me on that day and he gave that day to me. It was out of, na out of character for him, completely for him, but it still had our joke. Zerk when I put him in the stocks. Oh, I gotta have a picture of this, I gotta have a picture of this. Everybody knew that there was no way we were ever seeing him in the stocks again. And that just meant a lot to me that he actually did that because that's not his nature. He joked around with me on that day and he gave that day to me. It was out of, na out of character for him, completely for him. But it still had our joke. It still had our our semblance underneath. Um, we had it partially Christian, but we didn't have it in a church, um, being that I'm a Christian. So we had a pastor um, and all that good stuff. It was a melding of the two because it was a marriage. And it was really cool. One of the things I wanted to ask you, how do you reconcile your faith with this with this? There's a passage in the Bible that says anything done in the marriage bed is right with God. I cannot remember where it said that, but that to me is fine. I believe in a benevolent God. I do not believe in a vengeful God. The God that I worship gives us the right to choose, he gives us free will, and he will judge me when it comes time. And if he, if he deems what I do as wrong, then I will accept what he tells me. But for people to judge me, that is wrong. If I am happy, and if my children are happy and are brought up to where they understand life and they grow up to be decent people, then I've done my job well. If I'm not hurting anyone else, if I'm not bringing harm to my children, and I am living a good life, and I'm living a moral life by my morals and by my husband's morals, then it's fine. I don't see where anyone has the right to judge me. I don't believe in a vengeful God.